Okay, Ben Affleck attended the premiere of his new movie Air at the South by Southwest Film Festival and TV Film Phil Festival. <laughs> That's in Austin. It's really fun. I've been. Ben, who directed the film, was joined by his BFF and co-star Matt Damon, along with Chris Tucker, Jason Bateman, Viola Davis, and her husband, Julius Tenen, who plays Michael Jordan's dad in the movie. So the movie is about how Nike signed Michael Jordan to create the iconic Air Jordan shoe brand, but Ben explained why MJ actually isn't featured in the film. Watch. Now, he's not in the movie because, um, well, for one thing, you know, he's just too iconic and too famous. The minute you try to show somebody else and say that's Michael Jordan, you kind of lose the whole audience because, by definition, when you're that iconic, there's only one of you in the world. I think of Erica and Jeff being from Chicago. Would you be thrown off seeing someone play Michael Jordan? Do you think he should be in it? Well, I thought you were calling us iconic. <laughs> Now I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm not Chicagoan. Chicagoan. <laughs> yeah, I think Ben's got a point in the fact that if you don't, if you show Michael Jordan, people are going to want to hear about every detail of Michael Jordan. It's not a Michael Jordan documentary. It's about how Michael Jordan, Air Jordans, the brand, got started. So I kind of see their point of view saying, we're just going to leave him out of this. Watch the Bulls whole thing if you want to see all about Michael Jordan. But this is how the brand got started, and I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I should I say it? I compared it a little bit to Jaws because in Jaws, Spielberg... Don't say had, a little bit. Own it. Own it. <laughs> okay, Spielberg had a hard time making the shark work and what they did was he's such a big presence, the, Bruce the shark, you just see... Bruce? The shark's the name is Bruce? Yes. You it just, is? It is. You just see the um, woman going like this or you see legs and so you don't actually see the shark and that's actually somewhat scarier. Michael Jordan's presence looms large over this. You don't really need Michael Jordan though because this is all about business. That's a great analogy. I, thank you. I, I think well, it, no, it, it was it really horrible. A beautiful analogy. If we didn't yes. see the shark, beautiful. but we we saw the shark. Very few scenes. A lot. But, he jumped like, on the boat. The point, <laughs> one scene. One no, scene. No, you see his fin most of the time. He was so on he the boat. Point. Right. No, she does not. Yes, because she does. And if you go to Universal Studios, you could watch the whole That's shark. not Jaws. That's they different than the movie. They had Museum well, of Science Al's and Industry big, yeah, for a while. Al's a big basketball aficionado. Do you think she has a good point? I thought that was only associated with cigar smokers <laughs> aficionado. Uh, yeah, no. It, it, the, the only issue I have with that analogy, Tori, is that human beings already had the, the concept of a shark and that it's not great for them to get a hold of you. In this situation, <laughs> we're talking about a, a, a concept that had not really existed before, putting, putting a brand and a marketing and wrapping it around somebody that no one knew yet. The internet wasn't out. When you used to learn about basketball players, it was like you had to be a, a pure basketball junkie, like get magazines of high school All-Americans to keep up with the sport. So somebody's like, we're going to start our, our business, Erica, me and you, and it's with this guy you've never met and who your mom doesn't know. And we're, I mean, think about how crazy mm -hmm. that would be at the time. So I think it's really about the Brandon, like seeing that now it just aired the Air Jordan brand as its own corner of the shoe economy okay. market. I prefer the shark now. Yeah, no, well, no, 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 no. Okay. Right. <laughs> See okay. what you did say? I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Instead, though, the film, to y'all's point, uh, centers around MJ's mom, Dolores, who Michael said was instrumental in the deal with the Air Jordans. Michael also insisted that the role be played by Viola Davis. So Ben made it happen. I guess uh, MJ also wanted Chris Tucker to play his friend. Mm -hmm. I just love that he handpicked Viola and Viola is playing uh, alongside her real-life husband, mm -hmm. Julius. I know. Um, and they work together a lot. They have Juvie Productions together. I did not together. know that. Yeah, when I went to um, cover the Emmanuel film about the tragedy um, in South Carolina, that was a Juvie production. Oh, really? So Julius um, was, Tenen was the one who I was interviewing. Cool. He's very cool guy, very cool couple. I'm very excited to watch this movie. You think this will, I think this will do super well in the theaters. People love a Matt Ben do you like seeing Ben again? Oh, and yeah. And with Matt? Matt and Ben? What is this? Good one to all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Viola? Julius? Can't wait. Okay. All right. Speaking <laughs> of movies and actors, Adam Sandler was awarded the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor at a star-studded event at the Kennedy Center on Sunday. Stars like Ben Stiller, Drew Barrymore, Jennifer Aniston, they all showed up to support their friend and frequent co-star. And Conan O'Brien joked about the star of films like Happy Gilmore, The Waterboy, and The Wedding Singer getting such a prestigious honor. Watch. I come before you tonight to state in complete honesty and sincerity, you're making a terrible, terrible mistake. <laughs> Good God in heaven, Kennedy Center. 
What have you done? No award has screwed up this badly since a MacArthur Genius Grant was given to Vin Diesel. <laughs> Seriously, people have not been this shocked since I won a Latin Grammy. It was 2019, look it up. I love it. Um, what do you think of this? And you know, they go way back, because I believe Conan used to write for a lot of the Adam Sandler sketches on SNL. Yeah, well, first of all, those jokes were hilarious in the audience. <laughs> Yeah. They didn't laugh at anything. It's a DC so, Conan audience. did a great job. Yeah, right. I thought those were really funny. And really, shout out to Adam Sandler. I mean, he doesn't need it, but you go back and watch any of his movies, and you just, they're on TNT or TBS, and you just laugh. They're all funny. They all still hold up. And what a way he does his production, right? Does it on his terms. Happy Madison Productions. Films him in the best location with his best friends. Man, I wish I was his wife. Seriously, goals. that's like yeah. I could feel your jealousy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to Hawaii every time with just Jen Aniston, have a blast, make three billion dollars on all his films. There is an audience that has grown up with him from Opera Man and all that from SNL into this, and they all still love that sort of frat guy, dumb, funny. I mean, Billy Madison is one of the funniest what you, movies. Who are you describing? No one. No one. No one. No one. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I, I like that it, that it's being rewarded. I think whenever we talk about our show. We really watch whether it's Vanderpump or the uh, Below Deck or something. Yeah! Oh my God! Everybody always goes, "Oh, Ugh. so did mine's Love After Lock." It's like, "Oh, it's so dumb. It's my, it's my cheat show or whatever." But those are the shows you really like. Yeah. And Happy Madison makes people happy, and it's like, it's a, it's a, I could say a line, and Jeff will Shampoo respond. Shampoo is better. Yeah, it's a thing, and so like, the, I think that those movies are never celebrated, but yet we talk about The Shape of Water, and you're weird. A movie that no one would ever rewatch. A lot of the movies that win Oscars, people. Don't rewatch, but the ones people do, everybody's like, "Oh, I'm embarrassed to watch." It's mm. like there's a reason people watch those. I don't think that we have to disparage um, more sophisticated you, work have you and seen with the in order I'd to like elevate Adam and to the and less an e. sophisticated work. I I don't Thank think you, that Erica. anyone Thank should you. feel that their pleasure has to be guilty. Thank mm -hmm. you. That is a broader issue in the society. That's nicely right. said. If you like something, I love that for you. <laughs> Say that with your full heart you. and chest. That's I right. Okay. That's Thank right. you, Erica. Yeah, I, I really like did love feel after that. I love you. Uh, are you curious? <laughs> are you curious about how how uh, how Adam thought of the whole oh. award? Okay. Well, he took the opportunity to joke about it. Watch. My first thought, of course, when they told me I was getting this prestige. <laughs> Prestigious Mark Twain honor was, of course, wow, is Twain gonna be there? Uh, no, said the Kennedy Center people, to which I replied, makes sense. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. weird, but I think he, he you said. Yeah, I said, I think he, to me, he sometimes goes into that voice when he's overwhelmed or feels uncomfortable, a little bit of a security blanket. But like, I mean, who is still being like, Shampoo is bad. That's a great voice. You yeah, know what I mean? It is. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And it's a weird thing, but everybody there responded. Totally. First of all, I thought Conan, to your point, Jeff, was, I thought he had some really great jokes. The crowd was not We're giving going it back to, to him. That? <laughs> no, but I was, that was, I was making reference and then come to Adam okay. and say that he was getting big laughs from that voice, which again we call silly, but he's making the crowd emote because people resonate with that. Yep. I'm sorry, Sam, you're no. going to cut my point off again. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but that actually, like, <laughs> the, how they razz on one another is, like, how we razz. A thousand that. percent. That's true friendship. For sure. Okay. Bruce Willis, you guys, I saw this over the weekend. It definitely drummed up a lot of feelings for me. His 68th birthday was celebrated yesterday with his family by his side one month after they revealed his dementia diagnosis. Now, Bruce's ex-wife, Demi Moore, posted this video of his family singing happy birthday. Bruce looked in good spirits. He blew out the candles on his birthday pie. His wife, Emma, also posted posted a video talking about the struggles of being a caregiver. Watch. I just think it's important that you see all sides of this. Um, I always get this message or people always tell me that, oh, like, you're so strong. I don't know how you do it. I'm not given a choice. <laughs> I wish I was. Um, but I'm also raising two kids in this. Um, but I do have times of sadness every day. <laughs> grief every day um, and I'm really feeling it today um, on his birthday. Oh, that's real. You're mourning essentially a, a person that you knew and loved. I mean, dementia creates a very different person. Yeah, that's really scary. You know caregiver yeah. trauma more than anyone. Yeah, and I really appreciate her saying grief. There's a sense of like they're not gone yet, but they kind of are. And grief doesn't have to be only when someone's gone. 
it's incredibly lonely and scary and you usually just see the good part. So really big props to this woman, Emma, for sharing that. Because I know a lot of you out there are caregivers and it, hospice workers, the angels on earth. That takes a toll on you and yeah. no one really says how dark it gets. But and it gets dark. Dementia is especially cruel. I complete cruel. Because so it, cruel. they're a different person yeah. at the end. And yeah. it's like, especially when your kids are around and you're like your grandfather was not like this, you know, but they don't understand. And I couldn't imagine like having to explain uh, t to my kids that like somebody that just yelled at them really loves, like how, how would they reference it's that? Scary it's just too, like this, yeah. it's, yeah, you're right. It's, uh, it's the, the mourning of somebody in real time. And uh, no one talks about this because of the way we've been able to uh, improve care. They live much longer. So you might see somebody really just disintegrate over the course of six to eight years rather than six months, which in a weird way, there's a selfish part of you that wants them to go so they cannot be in pain anymore. My grandma's last thing she ever said to me was, you remind me so much of someone I used to know. Oh my God. God that's so heavy. Dude, I think about it all the time. Wow. Yeah. She knew I was in there. She was in there somewhere, right. just not at the same time. Oh my gosh. Weird. Wow. Wow.